All right, folks, we've been using this new iPilot trailing motor for a few months now, and overall we really love it. But I wanted to come on here and uh, for a couple different reasons to make this video. One reason is is because hopefully what I can show you here today, if I can imagine, if I can manage to explain it properly, will save you guys some time and frustration. And also, we actually had a subscriber comment on our last stop pilot video asking us to make more so we don't get a lot of requests for videos so when we get them we're going to try to make them but what we what we do in general with our iPilot trolling motor the reason we bought it is because we pull we drag baits for catfish we use planer boards 90 percent of the time sometimes we drag the bottom sometimes we're suspended beneath them but normally we're dragging four to six planer boards behind the boat so it's very important for us to be able to keep the boat in control. So one problem we were having is, is that we would set our, our uh, everybody calls it the north button. It's really called, technically it's the iPilot button. Hopefully you can see that. But it's a little button with the N and the arrow pointing up toward it. On the remote, kind of down the bottom right hand side right there hopefully you can see that that's what it is so in theory what that button's going to do is you're moving along in the direction you want to go you got the motor pointed in the direction you want to go you hit that button and its job is to keep the boat on that line to keep it going in that in that same direction uh, you can already have the boat moving in that direction and then hit the button you can hit the button and then get the boat moving and then manually adjust the direction however you want to do it either way is fine but that is the general purpose of that button now i'm going to turn the motor on and the only reason i'm going to turn it on is just for instructional purposes because obviously we're not in the water and the motor don't have to be deployed it don't have to be running but the power needs to be turned on now I'm going to turn the remote on, hit the little check mark. It's going to give me a little safety spill there. I'm going to hit OK. And now down at the bottom, you're going to see record and lock. We don't want either one of those options, so we're going to scroll down. That's going to give us options and system. We're going to select options. And you can see at the very top there, it says autopilot mode hit the check mark to select it and here you have legacy at the top and you have advanced at the bottom you can see that advanced is highlighted if i scroll up you can see the circles highlighted legacy is not highlighted i'm going to highlight legacy check mark and i'm going to close it now the reason i want the motor on is because if you do this on the remote without the motor powered on it won't save it'll change it for you next time you turn the motor on it'll go right back to the default to what it was before you moved it so let's talk about these two modes for a second so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about the new mode which is the advanced mode i'm going to draw you a little picture while we're at it here we're going to imagine that this magnet is the boat you're trolling along 0.5 mile an hour everything is going good you're pulling your planer boards behind you and you say you know what i want to stay on this line i so i hit that autopilot button what that motor does is it draws an imaginary straight line just like that now that motor's goal until you tell it to do something different is to keep that boat moving forward on that exact original straight line now here's the downfall of that the good thing to this mode is is that if you're trolling at a pretty fast spe uh, speed and you, you got a real tight area that you want to cover and you don't want to get off of it any at all then this will be the mode for you but here's what happens you get a big crosswind comes over blows the boat over here so now 
the motor gets all upset because the first thing it wants to do is get back over here to this original line and then resume course. So what's going to happen is this is when you get to the head of your trolling motor turning 90 degrees to the right. Then it'll get over to the line and overshoot it. Then it'll go 90 degrees to the left. And all of a sudden you're just your boat's going everywhere. And now all six of your planter boards looks like a big giant A-rig behind the boat because everything's all tangled up and messed up. So that's the downfall of the advanced mode. That is the mode that we started in because like I said, our motor defaulted to that mode. We had no idea about it. And when you're trolling at a slow speed and pulling all those baits behind you, the last thing you want is a bunch of quick corrections and overreactions with your direction. So now, let me erase this off here. All right, let's get our boat back in the water. Now let's imagine we're in legacy mode. Legacy mode, when you hit the autopilot button in legacy mode, uh, all that does is, is it sets a compass bearing. Whichever way you've got the head of that trolling motor pointed, you hit the autopilot button in legacy mode and it says, okay, I want to go to that exact compass bearing. I don't really care where I'm starting from or where I end up along the way as long as I, my end goal was to get to that point. So what that means is, is let's say I've got the trolling motor pointed toward this right hand top corner up here. Hit the autopilot button. Or the autopilot button could already be hit because when the autopilot button is engaged, you can still manually use the remote to change the direction of the motor and it updates that compass bearing. So if we're going straight ahead and I want to go 45 degrees to the right and I change my motor that way, then that's its new setting automatically. So back to legacy mode, I say motor. We want to go up here to this corner because there's probably a big fish right here in this corner. So now, motor's going to adjust until it gets on that line. Because all it cares about is eventually getting to that corner. Alright, now let's say we get a big crosswind. And it blows the boat way over here. Now, the difference between legacy mode and advanced mode now what's going to happen is is that instead of the boat fighting to get back on this line it's just going to use this new line from where it's at and say okay i don't care about you wind i know where i gotta go and i'm going to continue going to that point regardless where you put me at so for what we do at slow speeds with a lot of lines out of the back Legacy mode is really the only way to go because that is going to keep the boat straighter for a longer period of time. It's going to keep our lines untangled. It's going to allow us to cut bait, put out more lines, take a nap, whatever it is you want to do, let the boater be in charge. One thing I'm going to show you real quick before we go any farther is how to tell which mode you're in by looking at the home screen. So. We're going to go back and we'll go to options. We're in autopilot mode. Uh, I can't remember where we were at. So we are in legacy mode. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to turn my motor on. There we go. We got it on setting one. Of course, we're going zero mile an hour because the boat's in the garage. Now I'm going to hit the autopilot button. What you see right there is an N with an arrow pointing straight up toward it. That's legacy mode. Now I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go back to options. I pilot. 
and we'll go down and change it to advanced and we'll close that out I'm going to hit I'll pilot button so now you have an N with an arrow pointing up toward it with the line on either side and you can see already how much more erratic even though the boat is not doing anything at all but just sitting here it's almost like the advanced mode really struggles to figure out what it wants to do so I'm going to turn off I'm going to turn my iPilot off I'm going to adjust my motor back straight ahead I'm going to go back to options that's not what I want back I want to go to options autopilot And then we'll go back up and select Legacy again. And we'll close that out. We'll turn my motor back on. I'm going to hit my autopilot button. I think I've been calling it autopilot button, but it's autopilot button. So now what it's showing is it's showing this heading over here. So it's set at roughly 320 degrees compass bearing. The, obviously the motor should be still because the boat's still, right? Why adjust if the boat's not moving? So look how much calmer. You can see it twitch just a little bit. But look how much calmer the boat is in legacy mode versus advanced mode. So that's what we're going to start using. We already have started using it. But I wanted to get on here and show you guys, because you guys probably are smarter than us and you already know. But for those that don't, hopefully this will save you some time and frustration because we really didn't feel like the iPilot was as good as we thought it was going to be because of that reason. So the way we learn this, like I said, we learn things the hard way. We probably don't do enough reading and research as we should. But I was sitting at home the other night and I was watching a guy on YouTube and he was bumping. And I was watching it because that's something that I want to get into and I wish that I remembered his channel name because I'd give him a shout out because I don't want to steal his thunder for this whole thing. But he's sitting there bumping and he's using autopilot to hold his boat in the current. So he, he's sitting in fast current below a dam. He wants the boat to move with the current, but he don't want the boat to move as fast as the current. So he's got it set up in a way to where it's holding his boat back. So as he's bumping his bait, He's bumping slower than the current's going. And just right out of the blue, he said, guys, if you're using this to bump, make sure it's in legacy mode. That's all he said. And I thought, hmm, never heard of that in my life. So I got the next morning. I started researching it, looking at it. And sure enough, it was the exact problem we were having. We were not in legacy mode. Now you can guarantee we will be. And I'm sure advanced mode is great for some other uh, applications, but just not for us. But anyway, I'm gonna shut up because I've talked too much and hope this helps you guys out. Hope it saves you some time and frustration. And we will hopefully see you guys out with the boat actually in the water before too long. See you later, bye.